Hello, cyclocross friends. It is Wednesday, November 6th, and you are tuned in to USA Cycling's The Cross Report. This was the ninth weekend of UCI cyclocross racing in North America, and The Cross Report is here to give you the rundown. On the CX docket, this past weekend was the really rad festival of cyclocross, which took place in East Falmouth, Massachusetts. Despite it being New England in November, the weekend offered up sunny skies and beautiful autumnal weather, a welcome respite from the semi-rainy weekends the cyclocross traveling circuit has endured over the past month. Really Rad turned out to be a weekend of comebacks for North American stars fighting to regain the glory of seasons past. On the men's side, it was Tobin Ortenblatt finding form and finishing on the podium both days. And on the women's side, it was Ella Noble, who was fighting at the front on day one before mechanical issues thwarted her good ride but she made up for it on day two with a third place finish. As for the rest of the racing, in the men's field, the dominant Curtis White continued to have his way. Without recent arch nemesis Kerry Warner in the field, White was able to take control of Saturday's race after Cannondale Cyclocross World teammate Lane Mare went to the front to set a fast pace for the first two laps. After White flew the coupe on the second lap, the battle heated up behind with Ortenblatt out sprinting comp edge racing Sam Knoll who earned third. In Saturday's women's race, Cannondale Cyclocross World's Katie Klaus went to the front early and rode most of the field off her wheel. Ellen Noble was able to mark Klaus early before bike issues took her out of contention. Kona Max's Shimano's Becca Farringer and Liv's Crystal Anthony stuck with Klaus at the front, with Farringer putting in a number of attacks in windy conditions. On the final lap, Klaus went all in and was able to take the lead and hold off Farringer for the win. Anthony finished third. In Sunday's race, Klaus and Ferringer tried to outmaneuver each other to gain the winning advantage. Klaus went early and led a group of eight in the opening laps, but Ferringer played it smart, made sure she led in the sand where Klaus was stronger, and took advantage of the power sections to pull away in the finale to win by 14 seconds. Klaus held on for second with Trek Factory Racing's Ellen Noble outlasting Carolyn Nolan to grab the third step on the podium. For the men, it was another dominant performance by Curtis White who notched his seventh UCI victory of the season. White's Cannondale Cyclocross World teammate Lane Mara once again did the early pacemaking, leading in the early laps before White spun up the turbocharger and went off the front. A patient Mara attacked the chase group once he knew White was beyond reach and soloed in for second. Santa Cruz Donkey Label's Ortenblad finished third. While racing in North America was full on this weekend, notable American racers were also in action in Europe. At the Super Prestige Rue de Vorda, Katie Compton continued her strong return to racing with a third place finish. And Katie Keough finished just behind her in fourth place. Coming up next week is the Pan American Championships in Midland, Ontario, Canada. In the men's elite race, we are anticipating the battle between Kerry Werner and Curtis White to heat up once again, with Lance Haydett, Stephen Hyde, and Canadian champ Michael Vanningham in the mix. On the women's side, Canadian champ Magli Rochette is the clear favorite, but Becca Farringer and Clara Hansinger have been battling the current jersey holder all year and will give her a good battle. Courtney McFadden, Crystal Anthony, Jen Jackson, Raylan Nuss are among many other contenders eyeing the Pan Am podium. In the U23 men's field, three names who have been battling all year for elite podiums, Gay Checked, Eric Bruner, and Lane Mare, opt for the age-grade championship in what is certain to be a battle fought at a pace as high as the elite field. For the women's U23, Katie Klaus and Ruby West are the two names to watch. Similar to the men's race, these two have been fighting for wins in elite races all season before switching to the U23 field for the championships. In the men's junior field, defending champ Magnus Sheffield will have his hands full with Andrew Strohmeyer, Jared Scott, Ian McDonald, and many others who could vie for the podium. And in the first ever women's junior Pan Am championship race, Maddie Monroe and Lizzie Gonzalez come in as favorites with Grace Mattern, Aubrey Drummond, Bridget Tooley, Lauren Zerner, and a slew of other contenders all with a shot at the top steps. Next up on the North American Cyclocross calendar is the Northampton International Cyclocross Weekend, rounds one and two in the Victoria Northeast Cyclocross Series, and also the Pan American Cyclocross Championship in Midland, Ontario. We will give you the lowdown on those events next time on The Cross Report. In the meantime, check out the CX Heat Check Power Rankings on the CX Hairs YouTube channel to find out how your favorite North American cyclocross racers shake out in the top 11 men and women in North America. Thanks for tuning in to USA Cycling's The Cross Report, which is brought to you in part by the USA Cycling Foundation Mud Fund. I'm Bill Scheichen for CX Hairs and the Wide Angle Podium Network. See you next time, cyclocross friends.